Hey Steam Deckers, we've got some fantastic news for you. Not only have we got a massive Steam OS update bringing us to 3.6.19, but we've also got news on the Steam Deck 2 release cycle, as well as the Australian release date and also a Proton Experimental update as well. For some reason, my Steam OS isn't showing the release notes when I look at the latest stable, even though I have upgraded to the 3.6.19 update. But as you saw, it is a massive list of updates. However, there is something missing. You may notice game recording didn't come over. As far as game performance goes, I will test out a few games, but you'll see a bit of Metaphor Refantasio in the background at first, and then I'll also look at Sonic X Generations and also Cyberpunk 2077 as well. But first, Steam Deck is finally launching in Australia. In case you missed it, these are available to order from November and hopefully should ship by the end of the year. Also, as part of the reviews.org interview with the Australian team, it was also tipped that the OLED was not a full refresh. It was just basically what they wanted to launch with, but didn't have time. And the same with VRR. They want to add it in, but it's just taking quite long. They also announced that there isn't going to be a Steam Deck 2 very soon. They are not in the cadence for yearly updates because it's not fair to the consumer and they don't feel like there's been a big enough leap in the technology yet to warrant the upgrade. So expect a update when the new AMD chips launch with AMD FSR 4 support as well as increased RAM and better battery life as well for those performance chips. We can then see a Steam Deck 2 announcement. Proton Experimental was updated last night with a minor fix to update and improve video playback on a whole bunch of games. So if they are of interest of you, then let us know in the comments below. However, it does come with some other issues. It actually breaks Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 7 videos, as well as causing issues with the Quantum Break videos that were working and also playback failure intermittently on Shin Megami Tensei 3. Now, if you do have issues with those, you can roll back to use Proton 9.0-3 and that will get those games working. So, bit of a trade-off on that one. Hopefully they fix it in the next iteration. On to some of the main highlights of the SteamOS 3.6 update then, starting with the fact that this has been updated to the most recent Arch Linux base and bringing the kernel up to 6.5, which should also improve speed of subsequent OS updates as well as improving hardware compatibility, security and stability. They've also improved reliability with certain micro SD card usage scenarios and some misdetection on the SanDisk micro SD cards as well. And it should also recover from some crashes a little bit more quickly when they're GPU related. Although they're saying they fixed color space for game recording, game recording still is not available in this release. So hopefully that will come across from beta soon. And they fix issues with colors not being quite right with remote Steam play and crashing when the Steam Deck is a remote play host. They've also fixed a rare session crash during early startup of Elden Ring and display regression issues with Warriors All-Stars, Dissagia 5 Complete and Vampire the Masquerade Reckoning of New York. If you are playing Halo Infinite, they have now fixed the bug as well where you couldn't enable HDR. Input wise, I'm sure ROG Ally fans are going to be rejoicing that they've actually added support for the extra ROG Ally keys, which does point to the fact that they are going to be releasing Steam OS for other handhelds at some point soon, or just enabling Bazite to have better compatibility across the board in the meantime. They've also added support for the machine like G5 Pro controller, as well as fixing issues with the DualShock 4 controllers and DualSense controllers as well, not airing correctly. They also fixed some Bluetooth issues with pairing for Apple's AirPods, so they should actually pair a little bit more easily now. And they've got updates for the Steam Deck docking station, adding support for HDMI CEC features like remote input, wake up and input switching. And the firmware has been updated so that it should give better support for high refresh rate variable refresh rate devices. Although I've still not managed to get this working a lot of the time, I will have to go and retest this on some of the screens now. As part of the SteamOS 3.6 update, they have also updated the GPU driver, which is supposed to bring better performance. And if anything, it's very marginal. I did just cover Metaphor Refactor Zero and with my retest on 3.619, I did notice that it wasn't really much different. If anything, it was a little bit smoother. We didn't see the dips so badly. With Sonic Cross Shadow Generations, 
In the earlier stages, it does seem to hold up to that 60 a little bit more easily, but when we hit the later stages in the shadow generation sections on the space mission, it does still dip down into those low 40s quite often and just about holds around the 45 to 50 frames per second mark. It does actually feel like there's a little bit more input latency there, so hopefully this is just working out some kinks. On Cyberpunk 2077 in Dogtown, there still doesn't seem to be any major improvements when moving around, especially driving through the main city. We still get major load spikes and also loading issues and sub 20 frames per second at some points on the frames per second scale. However, when you get out and about, even just on foot in Dogtown without driving, causing those big load spikes, we're actually pushing 40 frames per second a little bit more happily, and it was actually quite smooth. Although it does still dip under those 40s fairly regularly, it just felt a lot better moving around, but we do still have those issues while driving. In the main game though, this is going to be a lot smoother, so it's going to be a case by case basis of whether there is actually any performance improvements so far. I did also give a quick test on Silent Hill 2 and not really notice any difference there either. Once you've updated, let us know in the comments below if you're noticing any games performing any better. That's it for this news roundup. I'm sure there are going to be a lot more coming very soon, so keep an eye on the channel and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.